whoa, this place is amazing. I don't come here very often, but I definitely, definitely should. Just look at that. It's a beautiful place, isn't it? I have two pieces of bad news this morning. The first one is that this lens, I think I've mentioned this before, but uh, it's, uh, it's breaking apart. Uh, hopefully you can hear the noise. I first noticed that this lens was not working properly back in Indiana in the winter in cold conditions. I thought it was a malfunction due to the uh, winter and to be shooting in snow, but now it's starting to happen in warmer and warmer temperatures. Like last night I went out to take some pictures and it was 45, 46. I mean, it was cold, it was not warm, but I, I think I should be able to take pictures at that temperature. And uh, this lens failed me. I was able to take a few, but then uh, failed me and, and died for the night. I just realized we got swallowed by the fog while I was talking. This is pretty cool. Oh, that's very cool. Oh, damn it. It's not working. You see? Noise. Ah, stopped. Anyway, it works like 10% of the time now, which is not good. You see, for situations like this, now the, the image is almost gone. Ah, and this is an example of why your camera gear should be reliable and it should work because you might miss images uh, like this one. So yeah, I don't know what to do. This lens is definitely breaking apart now and I might have to replace it because I really, really love this lens. Oh, and the second piece of bad news, this is a mistake I made, but because I'm going to be mostly driving around this morning, I loaded my camera bag with pretty much every lens I have, but I forgot one that would be very useful here, that is the wide-angle lens. So the widest I can go with the lenses I have right now is 28 millimeters, which is definitely not enough here to capture the whole thing. On one hand, it's forcing me to see uh, compositions that I might have not seen if I had a wider lens. But on the other hand, I would love to capture the whole thing. So I'm going to try something. That is to use the lens that I'm using to record this video right now. It's the Sigma 16mm 1.4. It's an APS-C lens, but it works on full frame bodies. It's going to have heavy vignetting, some distortion, and who knows what other flaws. But I might be able to get some 18, 19, 20 millimeters usable after the, the crop in post. So I'm gonna try that. Look at that. Pretty nice, light, compact, and it's a 60 millimeter 1.4, which doesn't exist for full frame. So it's kind of a very unique combination. Let's try it. Okay, so this is as, as close as I'm gonna get. <coughs> I don't wanna fall there. It's not worth it for a photo, but yeah, this is a very, a beautiful view but a very very wide view I don't think uh, there is any lens I could have here to capture the whole thing at least in a square uh, look at that the iPhone can get all of it but uh, in landscape not in square so yeah it's pretty wide so let me show you I have here the uh, 16 millimeter lens the Sigma you can barely see so I'm gonna show you the viewfinder it's all dirty but um, as you can see, it has a heavy vignetting uh, on the corners. But uh, if you look at the grid lines and you can kind of guess the square composition, it's almost a clean frame at 16 millimeters. And it gets even better if I step it down, uh, the aperture 
let me show you so now we are at f4 and the uh the vignette has improved a little bit so uh, right now i can get a complete clear 60 millimeter frame uh, with this APS-C lens on the uh, full frame camera which can come very handy and very it's very useful and helpful uh, in situations like this when you know uh, i you forget a lens or i forgot the lens so i can use this lens that i usually use for video i'm using it for for photo now same spot I was at yesterday you see there is only so much we can do from locations like this one this is just a viewpoint and there is only so much room here to move around and there's only so many elements that we can play with so all we can do uh, at places like this is to just keep coming back to them and hope for uh, different conditions and that's why I'm here today I was hoping for different conditions yesterday was a very gray cloudy day beautiful because i got the beautiful view of the canyon and the river today is a very different day it's clear and sunny there are still some clouds but today they are not they're not in the sky they are down there i don't know how this is uh, going to work i don't know this location very well but this fog is uh, coming towards me right now, so it's kind of obscuring everything. I don't have a view anymore. So I don't know if it's going to keep doing that, if it's gonna just burn off, if it's gonna go down eventually. All I can do is just wait and see. But I'm gonna do now really quick uh, to try to avoid that fog is to uh, fly the drone and try to get some images uh, from higher above being very careful because bringing it back to me uh, can be uh, treacherous here uh, it's a very thick fog so let's do it really quick going up was easy peasy i flew through the fog and above the clouds where i got a nice view and i think a nice image but as soon as i pointed that camera down i realized i was in trouble the fog was really, really thick and landing was going to be a challenge. You see, the thing is that drones are full of sensors and they can get confused in conditions like these. The Mini doesn't have as many sensors, but it does have sensors on the bottom for landing. I kept asking me if I wanted to land. It tried to land automatically, actually. So I had to keep canceling the automatic landing and I was able to fly straight onto the side of the cliff instead of back to the viewpoint. I was very, very lucky to uh, get the drone back. Almost lost this little guy here. Yeah, that wouldn't be good after losing my lens yesterday. I'm going to uh, put it away. It's too bad because it looks beautiful up there. And I'm sure I would have been able to, to make some cool images or at least record some cool videos. But I, I don't think it's worth risking the drone. I don't want to lose uh, more gear. So, yeah. One thing we can do at viewpoints like this one is to photograph the viewpoint itself. And in this case, it looks pretty cool. It's mysterious. You don't know what's beyond there. So 
don't know if it's gonna make for a good image, but I'm gonna try. And today, where's it? Haha! <laughs> today I did bring my wide-angle lens, so I'm gonna be using that one and the uh, standard lens. Yeah. Nah, I don't think it works. I've tried playing with these two trees here. I don't think it works. Clearing up a little bit. Whoop, there. You can see the other side, the other shore, I guess, the hills or the mountains at the other side of the river. This is the cool part about this kind of fog, low clouds, cloud inversion, whatever you want to call it. You don't have to do anything. You just have to stay at the same spot where you are. And it's the fog that is rolling in and out and it's going to reveal some parts of the landscape here and there. So it's going to give you a thousand different compositions and you don't have to move for that. This way even the landscapes that we know the best might reveal things that we hadn't seen before. So I'm gonna get ready for the show that is already happening here. I already see a lot of compositions that I want to make. So let's do it. What I do in a situation like this where we have a lot of fog is to look for interesting shapes. I look for diagonal lines, I look for uh, I don't know peaks that appear out of nowhere, uh, things like that, things that I can make for an interesting image. So for example here I've been focusing, let me show you, I've been focusing on that ridge over there, it's not as clear now as it was five seconds ago but it's because the uh, fog is uh, isolating that ridge there so it has a pretty cool and interesting shape it's a diagonal shape as you can see otherwise another one that i can see right now is over there you see if we zoom in enough that's another diagonal line another cool shape and yeah the trick is to just wait and keep an eye and uh, so we don't miss uh, those uh, shapes that the fog is revealing every once in a while. So the show is pretty much over. As I was saying, the show is pretty much over, uh, there is not much fog left. So the last piece of wisdom that I'm gonna share 
uh, in today's video is that when you go to a location, I came here, I drove an hour from home, I have to drive an hour back just to be here at this viewpoint. When you go somewhere to take photos, if you have the time, of course, it is worth uh, stopping by uh, other places on the way there or on the way back and it's also worth you know instead of sitting and waiting for the conditions to to arrive to just walk around and see what else you can make because sometimes the best images are the ones that are the least expected the ones that you are not expecting to make and that has happened to me many many times when i go back home with images from of course the place where i wanted to go to but also with plenty of images from other spots nearby that I happened to find while I was there. And this time is no different. Yesterday on my way back home I stopped by a very old monastery, I think it's a thousand years old, or at least some parts of the structure are that old. It's a place I hadn't visited in the past, it's a place I wasn't expecting to visit yesterday, but I happened to be there, I happened to have a little bit of time left, so I decided to go there and check it out. I think I've made the best image of the trip. I don't know if this qualifies as two different trips because I've been coming here for two days in a row. But yeah, I've made the best image there at the monastery and not here at the viewpoint. And the reason why I'm here is this place, the viewpoint, not the monastery. And it goes to show how important it is to stay flexible with your photography. Yes, we all need a reason to go out. This viewpoint was my reason, that's why I'm out here today but if I see something I will stop I will try to make a photo there I'm not just focusing on coming here and going back home anyway I should be paying more attention to the landscape because I might be missing some images while I talk to the camera and then I'll just head back home and who knows I might stop by uh, somewhere on the way there and make some more images but if I don't I hope you found this video entertaining and helpful thank you so much for watching again and see you in the next one.